Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome back to this special one hour edition of Facing South Florida. Later, we'll get you an update on Tropical Storm Ada, but this morning, we are focusing on the election in Florida. The $15 an hour minimum wage amendment passed statewide. In Broward, Sheriff Gregory Tony holds on to his job. And for the first time, African American men will serve as state attorney and public defender. Meanwhile, Debbie Hickson, whose husband was killed during the Stoneman Douglas shooting, was elected to the Broward School Board. We've also been examining the remarkable showing by President Trump in Florida and how a red wave swept through Miami-Dade County, taking out two Democratic members of Congress. How did that happen and what does it mean for the future? I recently posed that question to State Representative Danny Perez, who is in line to become Speaker of the Florida House. I think statewide we can all agree that uh, the recent trend of Florida being defined as a purple state is is out the window. I think uh, the recent trend has shown that, that Florida is officially a red state. Uh, across the state, um, people have made a decision to vote with the Republican Party. And I think a lot of it has to do with the recent influx of individuals from liberal states like New York um, fleeing the tax system and the burdens that they have in New York to come to Florida. And some of these have kind of figured it out. They don't want to vote the same way from the place they left. That's been a state, uh, a state trend that has been happening for a while, and it's the reason that, that President Trump won the state of Florida. But locally, I think it's a combination of that same issue. And also, I think it's a messaging issue, um, a positive for the Republicans and a negative for the Democrats. I think the Democrats just missed an opportunity when it came to messaging uh, and standing up for the law uh, and order of this country. They, they went the other way, and the people of Miami-Dade, for the most part, um, recognized that. And you see that in the results of the Florida House and the Florida Senate. Um, we picked up seats in both of those chambers in Miami-Dade County, um, and in many times, uh, outperformed the president in many of those seats. Um, so I think it was a messaging standpoint from the Republican Party and, uh, and Speaker Sprouse uh, on a statewide initiative. How important of that message was, was the issue of socialism and, and, and decrying Democrats as being potentially, you know, favoring socialist policies or being socialist themselves in some hidden way? How, what, what role did that play, do you believe, in this election? I think it played a huge role. Look, I represent Westchester, uh, Kendall, Doral, the Fountain Blue area. Uh, anything that's even similar to the word socialism is never going to work in Miami-Dade County, definitely not in the heart of Miami, in Westchester, which is the area that I represent. And rightfully so, Jim, rightfully so. Here's a problem with the Democrats. You know, I'm not saying that every Democrat's a socialist, uh, but every socialist is definitely going to be a Democrat before they're a Republican. And the Democratic Party did not stand up for the law and the order of this country. Here's a problem that they had. There were many candidates for the Democratic Party that signed pledges to defund the police. Many. Well, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Wait, I just want to, I want to be clear because the election's over and, and yeah, I always course. thought that this term defund the police was the misuse, was the most misused term uh, in, in the election other than socialist, perhaps. Just because as I always saw, first off, do you think that anyone uh, running down here wanted to eliminate police departments? No, I don't believe any of them wanted to eliminate police departments, but taking away funds from a police department for whatever other set of committees it is that you want is part of the general common te uh, theme of defunding the police. Well, I want to come back to the issue of socialism for, for a second. The, um, you know, there are, I talked to Freddie Balsara earlier in the show, and one of the things that, that he said is he believes that, that it's, that's really exploitive, that, that to to trade on the pain of folks who are coming from countries, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, wherever it is, Colombia, who equate socialism with authoritarianism, with repression, that, that, that what the Republicans were able to successfully do is really exploit that pain in, in a way that benefited them but may not have been morally right. How would you respond to that? 
I, I don't think this is a moral issue. I, I, I think, look, if you want to speak about morality and making connections, I thought the commercial against Carlos Jimenez, uh, where the FIU bridge was shown uh, at, in real time as it was collapsing, I mean, there was nothing immoral in this entire campaign process than that. The first time I saw that, I was actually disgusted that the Democrats would allow that to take place. But I'm sure even the Democrats could agree with that, and they did, eventually taking it down. But if you want to talk about what the Republican message was when it came to socialism, what the Republicans did is they... They stated facts and allowed the population to reach their own conclusion. And here were the facts. We spoke about several candidates signing the defund the, the, the police pledge or moving funds, however you want to name it, Jim. But we also showed other facts. Here's another example. Kamala Harris made it very clear on national television that she was for taking away the private health care insurance options for Americans. That was a fact of life. That is a topic that is very similar and a strategy that is very similar to those in other countries like Cuba and Venezuela and Nicaragua. Those are facts. And so when you state those kind of facts, yes, a population where many people have either lived it or have family members that are living it or have lived it in the past, when they see those facts, they are themselves going to reach a conclusion that the Democratic Party does not want them to reach. Whether well, that is their- you, Let me ask you this. Do you consider Medicare a socialist? Do you consider Social Security socialist? No, but Medicare and Medicaid is not for everyone. I'm not forcing Medicare or, or Medicaid down everyone's throat. If you want to have Medicare or Medicaid and you qualify for it, then you use it. it. I mean, the government is assisting those that need the assistance. But if I don't want to use Medicare or Medicaid and I want to use whatever private health care insurance I want to, I should have that option. I'm not saying but, to take away the assistance of, of those that, that need it. I'm saying quite the opposite. I think that there are many individuals that need it, and I'm glad that we give them that option. That, that's our duty. Um, but I guess but not, what, what I'm saying is, but, but at the end of the day, Joe Biden was the candidate and Joe Biden did not embrace Medicare for all. But he, but, but he, but he made a, a choice to choose Kamala Harris as his vice president. And let's be honest, I mean, uh, Joe Biden's no spring chicken. Um, I, I wish him the best if he does uh, come out as, as the winner. Um, but, but Kamala Harris is going to have a very forceful voice in any administration that she is a part of, regardless if it's this one or another one. Let me ask you to um, address an issue that I've heard. I've actually seen um, uh, folks from the Trump campaign, Giancarlo Sopo, talked about, you know, how Cuban Americans like the iron fist, to, you know, on their side. The um, Freddie Balsera also said there is a tendency for Cuban Americans and others to gravitate towards a strong man. Do you buy into that to that idea as well? Well, I, I think so, because I, many of these Cuban Americans have a family where, uh, you know, in, in 1959, uh, there was nothing concrete in their island and someone took advantage of that. Uh, here's, here's a good example. Last night I was watching Joe Biden speak, uh, I don't know, it's probably 11 p.m., uh, and, and, and I noticed that uh, he said a lot of nothing. I mean, there was nothing concrete. People don't want fluff. Cuban Americans don't want fluff. We want facts. We want something direct. We want something real, something we can touch. If we're just going to talk about generalities, that's just not going to do well with the Cuban American population. But I guess, I guess when I say strongman, is it that they want an authoritarian leader? Do they want, in other words, is it almost as if, and, and again, I'm just trying to get, a, get an understanding, because maybe I don't, because I don't have that shared experience of, of those families that come here or their first generation, you know, seeing that their parents who came here. So I'm trying to understand, is it, is it when you flee a repressive regime, you know, an authoritarian regime that you want the protection of somebody who you think will be as tough, as strong, but on your side? Is it almost as if I want my bully to be bigger than your bully? It's not about being a bully. It's just about they want someone that's going to support them and that's going to stand up for their country. Let me tell you, uh, and, it's, and we, we keep mentioning Cuban Americans. It's not just Cuban Americans. I mean, it's just in, in generalities. Uh, we're talking about Nicaraguans, Venezuelans, just um, Americans. Let's be honest, just Americans. Uh, even the, the Cubans, they are so proud of being Americans. You see that. And I, when I knock door to door, I can tell you this. There are more often than not Republican households that have an American flag waving in front of their house. And it doesn't mean that Democrats aren't American. It just means that Republicans are very, very proud of being American. And Donald Trump came out the gate in 2016 with a slogan that said, America first, America first. And many Democrats ran from that. They said, it shouldn't be America first. It should be a unity. It should be a global idea. It should be everyone on the, on the, same, on the same page. That's just not reality, Jim. I want someone that's gonna go out there and say, yes, the country that has given me every opportunity under the sun is my number one priority. 
Up next, Congressman Ted Deutsch.